You're listening to Utah's first number one talk station. Gay Talk, AM 630, KTKK, Sandy Salt Lake City. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. It's Saturday, 22 minutes after the hour. I'm Steve Reinhardt. I'm your host. You're with K-Talk, AM 630, the voice of Utah, Utah's oldest continually broadcasting radio station. K-Talk's been on the air for 51 years. As a matter of fact, it was just... I have uh, a college uh, undergraduate degree from East Tennessee State University in history and political science. Um, after I left uh, the university, I went and I was commissioned as an officer in the Marine Corps. Uh, where I served all over the world, uh, including some time in the Far East, and uh, and I came home and and uh, I was discharged after four years, and I uh, I went to law school. I worked for a couple of years before I went to law school. Uh, I went back to graduate school for a while, and and then I um, that wasn't taking me where I wanted to go. So I spent six months working in a car factory up in Michigan. Then I went to law school at uh, the University of Memphis, and while I was in law school, I met uh, a woman that became my wife, and uh, we've been married now for 38 years. We have one daughter who's 32 years old, and uh, I opened a private law practice in 1984, and I've been a practicing lawyer now uh, for, I guess that's 37 years, Uh, and... um, I've been. I was one of the founders of the Constitution Party in 1992. I uh, I met a man named Howard Phillips, who was actually the founder. It was his his idea, his baby, if you will. And Howard uh, had invited a group of people to to join him in the effort. I was one of those people. There were five of us, and uh, the other four are all dead now. But uh, Howard was a visionary, and uh, he didn't think the uh, Republican or Democrat parties would ever take us where we wanted to go as a nation. He had worked in the in the Nixon administration, and he kind of knew how Republican politics worked. But so he said uh, the original intent of the founders is still valid, and we put a party together that believed that and was founded on that basis. And uh, I still believe that today. I I was the party's nominee in 2008 for vice president, and. Uh, here I am today, so that's that's pretty much my life. You probably don't know anything about my background. I happen to also be an attorney, and so is Dave Pine, the individual who got you on the show today, who hosts shows here as well. Typically, the Constitution Party, I think, gets about 3% of the vote here in the state of Utah, which I think is larger here than it is in the rest of the nation generally. Any idea where your numbers are right now? Uh, no, I really don't have any idea, but I would... Uh hope uh, they would be somewhat substantial. I know that uh, there are some people who uh, who brought uh, Mr. McMullen into the uh, into the forefront because they didn't like Donald Trump. Um, and there, mm-hmm. there's obviously more reason to it than that. Uh, it's a lot more than just not liking Donald Trump. Um, Mr. Trump represents something to these people, something that they can't they can't abide, so they, can't uh, very well. they would rather see they would rather see Hillary Clinton elected as they would to uh, to accept that. But nevertheless, uh, I offer myself as an alternative to people, and uh, I have certain things that I believe in that I'm not willing to compromise on. And I believe if if the American people would give those principles a chance, they would prove that this could be a dynamic country again. Uh, never mind the personality. Never mind me. It's it's the principles that I I uphold and would like to see uh, return to American life. Just a couple of things that you may not be aware of. There have been some polls just in the last three days here, and Evan McMullen is leading in the state of Utah according to these polls by quite a bit, and he's followed second by Donald Trump, third by Hillary Clinton. They're all between twenty five and and thirty uh, percent here in the state of Utah. Utah probably is looking like it'll be the only state to vote for a a third-party candidate in the whole country. And it looks like you're polling uh, right around 10% for 
or at least according to one of the polls. And so you have a, quite a quite a bit of support here in Utah. That translates into at least a, a couple hundred thousand votes, I I believe. Do you think that the Constitution Party has more in common with the value of Utah voters than, than the other parties do? Can you tell us a little bit about what distinguishes you from the other candidates that you think are important for, for voters here? Well, I am... Um uh, I'm I'm a pro-life candidate, and as I said in my uh, description of myself, I, I believe in the original uh, intent of the founders of this country, uh, who said that uh, government should be limited. Uh, they don't believe in unlimited government like uh, all three of the candidates that you just mentioned who were ahead of me in the polls seem to believe. Um, sometimes people ask me, what do you mean by limited government? And I will say, well, what do you mean by unlimited government? because that's what we have now. Uh, limited government simply means that political power uh, corrupts the minds and the morals. No one can resist it. Political power is simply the, the legalized privilege of using brute force against anyone in the world that you choose, whether that person has harmed anyone or whether he hasn't. Uh, and that power has to be limited. And if you do not limit it, you simply have a series of elected dictators uh, so I, I alone, among all the candidates, uh, stand in favor of holding power accountable to the Constitution. That is the reason for voting for me. Uh, there are a lot of LDS people in Utah, as you obviously know. Mm -hmm. And uh, those people, uh, I've found in my dealings with them, tend to, to revere the Constitution and hold it as a special place, as I do. And uh, if they do, I would suggest to those people that, that there is only one candidate for them. If they don't care about it, uh, then any of the other candidates will do. Uh, and, uh, you know, if they choose Evan McMullen over me because he's a member of the LDS Church and he went to BYU, I would remind them that my running mate is also a member of that church and has a master from BYU. <laughs> Uh, so that's not a valid reason. Uh, I'm certainly not a member of that church. I do not share that faith, but I am a Christian man who uh, who uh, uh, upholds those principles as uh, God gives him the light to see it. But the primary thing is that the rule of law is, is in danger in America. The Constitution is in danger in America, and uh, uh, we have an opportunity to see it continue or we have an opportunity to let it die, just let it go and say, okay, we we accept the fact that there are two sets of laws, one for them and one for us. Our law, the one that we're held accountable to, that if we violate, we get criminally sanctioned. We we accept the fact that those laws do not apply to our, our betters, the one who rule over us. So I stand in opposition to that, and uh, people still have a couple of weeks to uh, to make the right decision. I've got ancestors from all over the country. I've got some from Alabama, a lot of ancestors from Ohio, some from some from the South, and I'm licensed in an attorney as an attorney in Virginia and here in Utah. And I've I've gone back and forth across the country, like like you have. And my feeling's always been that Utah voters share more in common with the worldview of of people in the South, perhaps than people in the South realize. When I go to the South, I. I talk to people who think Utah culture is this this foreign culture they can't relate to. Yet people here in Utah feel like they share the Christian values and the Christianity of the South and the morals and are supportive of most of the same issues that that people in your neck of the woods are. And I, so I think they're naturally predisposed to vote for the Constitution Party. Well, I found uh, what you just said about sharing the morals and so forth. I've certainly found that to be true. I, in my association of uh, 25 years with the the uh, Constitution Party, I I have many many dear friends from Utah. My running mates from Utah, as I said, and I've been uh, to Utah twice uh, during this campaign. And uh, you know, I I would agree with what you just said. Those people don't communicate very well sometimes, but uh, the people of Utah just uh, humbly go about their business, you know, minding their own business, and they don't say much about it. But, uh, you know, I, I wanted to appeal to them for that very reason, and uh, 
these folks that brought Mr. McMullen in, I, I mean, I don't want to run a campaign that's based on uh, saying negative things about other people, but I simply point out the truth, and that is that he, he was brought in especially to appeal to them because he is a member of that church, and they thought uh, if you look at his foreign policy and, and other types of things, it's the opposite of mine, so it's a clear choice in that regard. In many other ways, we're similar, at least at least in word. Well, I encourage our listeners here on this station to vote for, for you and vote for the Constitution Party, and I know other hosts here feel the same way. There are a lot of issues that get a lot of attention during the presidential race, and some that don't get as much as they should. Something that was mentioned in the last debate between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, and I know you weren't there on stand, even though I wish you, you wish you were, is the Supreme Court. There'll be one to some people say as many as four justices appointed to the Supreme Court. You're an attorney. In some ways, I, I feel like your background is similar to Chief Judge Roy Moore of the Alabama Supreme Court, who just got suspended. He also was an officer in, in the armed forces, became a lawyer, and believes he fears both the erosion of state sovereignty by judicial activism, activism and the erosion of First Amendment rights. Do, do you think that these concerns about the Supreme Court are overblown? Do you do you believe that a lot of our values are being threatened by the judiciary? Uh, yes, I do believe that. I, I don't think those those fears are overblown whatsoever. I mean, I agree 100 percent that uh, Hillary Clinton becoming president would be one of the greatest catastrophes in the history of America. I, I, I certainly don't deny that. For many reasons, the Supreme Court is just one of them. But, uh, you know, I've laid out for people uh, uh, the, the nominations that I would make, uh, one through one through three at least. I, uh, if I were fortunate enough to have more than three, uh, that would be great. But I, I've uh, revealed three people that I would nominate for those positions and uh, – it would be up to the people of this country who elected me to do the very thing I was trying to do to to help me get those nominees through uh, through Congress. Who, who are the but three I, nominees? No, I, I, well, my first would be my old friend Herb Titus, who uh, is a constitutional uh, lawyer in Virginia. He's a Harvard Law School graduate. He uh, is a very bright man. He was uh, dean of Regent University uh, uh, Law School. And uh, he's eminently qualified for that position. I, I have not talked to Herb. He's, I, he's been my friend for at least two decades, if not more. And uh, I think he would accept it. He would be a very a wonderful choice. I, I, I could assure people that he would uh, he would be a good choice. And second would be Roy Moore that you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I, I haven't talked to Roy about it, but... I think he would be interested since he's chief justice or was chief justice of the Alabama Supreme Court. And third, I think uh, Andrew Napolitano, uh, as a possibility, would be uh, would be a good choice. And those people seem to hold the same values that I do, and uh, uh, would uh, continue those on the court. What do you think of Merrick Garland, the current nominee of President Obama for the court? Um, well, all you have to say is the current nominee of President Obama, <laughs> and uh, that, that makes me opposed that to makes, it. Makes you worry. Seriously, uh, yes, I, I, uh, that's all you have to say. I mean, just look at the man's record and what you know he's trying to do to this country. Uh, I can think of one truthful thing he's told us, and that is that he would fundamentally change America, and he's certainly done that. I agree. He's trying to continue that legacy of change on into the future, and uh, I applaud the... Uh, the Senate for refusing to go along with it. Some people are saying that Merrick Garland is more moderate than a nominee yeah. that, that Hillary Clinton might put in there if she's elected president, and it's anticipated that she will be. Do you well, think she said that uh, she she said in her debate the other night that if she were elected president, uh, she would push for him as her nominee. Do you think the Senate ought to confirm him if it looks like she's going to become the president? No. No, so I wouldn't he, confirm him under any circumstances. Uh, I can't do that. I can't. I cannot uh, 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 confirm or vote for somebody that's the antithesis of what I believe. 
Absolutely not. Hoping that she, you know, in fear of she that she might nominate somebody worse. I, I try not to live my life in fear. Uh, you know, I, I try to do the right thing as God gives me the light to see it. Your position on immigration is clear on the internet, but for our listeners who don't under know what your position is on it, can you give us a little insight into that? How would you deal with the immigration problem? Well, yes, uh, I think we should uh, we should have a moratorium on immigration until we. We get control of our borders. Our borders are wide open. People walk across at will. We don't know who they are. We don't know if they're terrorists. We don't know if they have some some disease that Americans have never been exposed to or something like that. So I would propose that we uh, we use the means that we have available to us, our, the laws that are currently in force and so forth, until we have secure borders and we can vet the people coming in. And then at that point, uh, we can... We can admit as many people as we want to admit, but we will know who they are and why they're coming to America. Do you think there needs to be a wall, without a doubt? Well, I, uh, I'm i going to say no to that right now. But at the same time, uh, if that's what it takes to secure the border, uh, I would not hesitate to do it. I just don't believe that that's the case right now. I, if we just enforce the, the law that we have, that would be a big improvement over what we have now. So you're suspending a decision on the, the wall. That, may, that makes sense. What I'm, what I'm saying is is that uh, in my own mind, knowing, knowing uh, no more about it than what I know, I've been to the border. Uh, I've talked to people there. I've given speeches there. Uh, but uh, what I'm saying is, is that I think we should start by trying to enforce the immigration laws that we have uh, but I will say that if it if it took a wall to secure our borders, I would be willing to do that. Now, the Constitution Party is, I, some would say, more conservative than the Republican Party, but it believes certainly in uh, more limited government than the Republican Party does. And true to that belief, you support the the legalization of cannabis. It sounds like. Is that is that right? I support uh, I support the the decriminalization of cannabis. I don't think uh, the possession of that substance should be a crime worthy of imprisonment. And on s- social issues, would you describe yourself as a, as more flexible than the Republican Party, or, uh, or less flexible? No, I would not. I mean, it depends on what you mean by flexible. I. I'm just a God-fearing American. I, I I have no qualms whatsoever telling people what my views on the social issues are and how, what I think we should be doing as a country. I uh, to me, it comes down to to political power and what what how much political power do we want government to have? Uh, if you take the subject of abortion, for example, uh, we give political power to the government. We the people, uh, we, we tell government that they have the power to tell us who is and is not a person. You know, as you know, as a lawyer, the courts have said Mm -hmm. that if, if the unborn were persons in a legal sense, then they would be, it would be unconstitutional because they'd be entitled to fifth amendment protection. Uh, well, I believe they are persons and I believe it's very dangerous to, to cede that authority to government. I could tell you if we had time, uh, the history, uh, uh, of the last couple of hundred years where people gave to government the right to tell people who a person is and who a person isn't. The most recent example, obviously, is is uh, the Nazis who, who came to the conclusion that Jews were not persons and they were free to, to murder them, to send them to the death camps, to gas them, to imprison them, to torture them, and so forth, because they weren't persons. They were subhuman. Well, it's the same thing we tell the unborn today. So government should not have that power in my view uh, now you know if you want to take uh, same sex marriage for example I, I, as I said earlier I'm a Christian I'm adamantly opposed to it in fact my understanding of, of Christianity and of biblical scripture is that uh, there's no such thing as gay marriage God determines what, what marriage is and he says it's between one man and one woman period so uh, if I were president of the United States and and two people came to me of the same sex, and they said, "Look, uh, Mr. President, we're married. Here's a here's a Catholic priest and a, a liberal minister and uh, and a civil magistrate who will testify to that fact." I'd say, "Well, I, you know, 
I don't care what those three people say. In my mind, you're not married, period. But at the same time, it's none of my business as as uh, president. It's not something that government should be concerned with. Since uh, in my world, government would not convey financial privileges on different classes of people, uh, there would be no advantage to uh, to your status. Uh, it's, a ma- it's a matter between uh, man, woman, and God, in my view, and, uh, and government should not require people to come before it and buy a license for permission to enter into some union like that. Uh, that's the way I see it. Well, I'm glad to hear you say those things. I agree with you on that. I agree with you on the abortion issue. A lot of people around here do. Do you, do you sense that pro-life positions or support for pro-life positions has been slipping across the country or maybe in the South, that people are more indifferent uh, to it than they used to be? Probably uh, probably the South is the last place for it to slip. But, um, um, yes, that's probably true. Uh, but I will tell you this. Uh, I travel around all over the country, and I speak to people who are willing to to listen to me. And the people I speak to are, are passionately pro-life. Uh, I don't speak to many people who who say, well, I, I was in favor, you know, I was not in favor of killing babies, but now I am. I've changed my mind. I, I meet very few people like that. Uh, if you want to ask the average American whether he's in favor of uh, partial birth abortion, where a baby is murdered in the very act of being born, you'll get a, you'll get a massive, overwhelming negative on that but that's still what the democratic party proposes uh so uh there are plenty of people out there who favor abortion in some way they uh they they say that uh it's a woman's right they say that uh only certain babies should be killed others you know we have restrictions on which ones we can kill and which ones we allow to live and so forth but uh you know i think if uh if we can have the opportunity to to present these views to the American people, uh, that uh, uh, they'll accept them. So perhaps there's been some slippage. I don't know. There's you know the the propaganda in favor of it is overwhelming. I mean, uh, Mrs. Clinton says you want to do this to women, but uh, as someone once said, you know, when you uh, when you kill a child, you know, you, you don't have a woman that's not pregnant anymore. You have a mother of a dead baby. Uh, the, the issue has always changed. You know, the issue they tell us is, uh, is a woman's privacy or a woman's right to choose. But the issue is really a dead baby. And uh, we can't let go of that as people. We have to keep bringing that back to people and say, no, that's, that's not the issue. The issue is the baby that you purport that we kill. I'm glad to hear you say that. That That's not a uh, position most people are willing to take or something most people are willing to say. But I'm glad to hear you say it. I feel the same way. I know I know a lot of liberal individuals or individuals with liberal leanings in, in the professional law, both here in Utah and, with, and outside. And I've periodically heard women say that they've lost their baby when they've had an abortion. And so yeah, infuriating yeah, to me to hear that as if it was yeah, an accident that, that they couldn't control. Well, let's face it, uh, most of the people in our profession, I mean, I'm a member of the uh, the American Trial Lawyers uh, uh, and and what used to be the American Trial Lawyers, which is now the uh, American Association for Justice. I, I'm a member of both. And uh, their, their membership was overwhelmingly Democrat and overwhelmingly pro-abortion. Uh, yeah, that's I right. pulled out. I withdrew from the ABA back in the 1980s because they took a pro-abortion position and they appointed pro-abortion people to all the major committees like the lip, uh, litigation committee and that sort of thing. I withdrew, withdrew from them. Um, and uh, now the ABA and the American Trial Lawyers have done the same thing. Well, two two questions for you. First, what would you say to somebody who says, I want to vote for the Constitution Party, but they can't win, so I'm going to have to pick between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton? And, and second, do you think Donald Trump is qualified in any sense to, to be president, or has the things that he's said and done just completely disqualified him? Uh, um, let, me, let me answer the last part of your question first. I, okay. I think that uh, Donald Trump is leading a... Uh, 
a revolutionary movement in America and probably doesn't even know it. Um, I think it's a very important movement. It's, it's the people of this country trying to tell the elite, we are not buying what you're selling anymore. Uh, we want something different. We don't want this rammed down our throats any longer. We know what you're trying to do. You know, when, when Mrs. Clinton, when you gave that speech to the Brazilian bank and you said you dreamed of a, uh, of a hemispheric open borders and a hemispheric common market, we, we don't think you were talking about green energy. We think you were talking literally. They paid you $220,000 to give that one-hour speech. Uh, which you went down there and gave, and you dreamed of these things. You said, well, your dream is my nightmare. I can't imagine anything more horrifying than your dream. Uh, and people are hearing this, and they're, they're sick of it. They, they, they hear those words, and they think if they have brains, uh, what's that going to do to all those middle- and lower-income people that she says she, she represents? What's that going to do to their jobs when they have to compete with immigrants from Venezuela, from Haiti, from El Salvador and so forth, pouring across unimpeded. Uh, and what's that going to do to this social welfare state that she says she loves so much? How are the 50 percent of us who still pay taxes going to support all those people? Uh, how are we going to provide them free health care, free, uh, free college tuition, free food, free shelter, and so forth? Those are the things that people are starting to realize, and they're sick and tired of Donald Trump is leading that movement, and unfortunately, he is a very troubled, uh, problematic uh, candidate. Uh, and the movement is vitally important, but uh, he's a poor, poor candidate to, to lead it. Uh, I'm not going to, you know, I, I just, uh, I'm not willing to say right now that uh, the things he's done, the things that have come out on him have disqualified him from being president. I think Hillary Clinton is far more disqualified than uh, than he is. I mean, uh, the FBI has stated many times that she's guilty of numerous crimes, and since we have no rule of law anymore, they won't prosecute her. But, uh, uh, you know, I couldn't vote for Mr. Trump. Let me put it that way. I'm a Christian. Uh, I couldn't do that. Uh, I understand if people want to. I do. I understand that. Why should they vote for me? That's the second part of your question. Well, because I share their values, and uh, they want this country. They have the same vision of this country for this country that I do. And uh, if you do not support people who have that vision, who have those values, you will never get them. And, of course, if I were talking to Christian people, I would say, uh, don't you have any faith in God? You know, just take one step of faith. And maybe uh, we can build something generationally. You know, the preamble says for ourselves and our posterity, uh, we establish this union. Maybe we're working for our posterity. Uh, we'll see. But we need to have faith and do that. That that would be my answer. I'm predicting, and we only have just a couple of minutes left here in the show, but I, I'm predicting that you will have broad support here in Utah. I don't know if you'll have the highest percentage uh, of, of the voters here in Utah that vote for you as any state or not, but you'll have, you'll have broad support. And even if you don't win the presidency, I think your candidacy will be a credit to the Constitution Party going forward. Your descendants and, and everyone's will benefit from an, an increased, the, the increased strength of the Constitution Party. Well, let me forward. thank you for saying that, and, and let, me, let me finish out my talk by saying mm -hmm. that on uh, November 8th or in early voting, if people chose to go that way, the people of America, the people of Utah, actually, let me talk to them. The, you folks in Utah mm -hmm. could rise up and effect revolution in this country. You could, you could, in fact, have a bloodless revolution. There aren't many of those around. Uh, even our own revolution was bloody. But you could effect a, a bloodless revolution. And I could wake up on, uh, on November 9th and be president of the United States, uh, and I could have carried your state of Utah, and you could be the impetus behind that. And uh, the world would be would be turned upside down. It would never be the same again. That would be an earth-shaking uh, uh, event of such monumental proportions. It couldn't be overestimated. Uh, that is is within the reach of every person in America, but it starts with you folks right there in Utah. Those are powerful words, and I'm going to encourage our listeners today and going forward in the, the times I'm on the air until November 8th to, to vote for the Constitution Party. 
Yeah. And, well, I really do appreciate that. And I, I appreciate you coming on the air with us. I'm sorry we, we haven't had more time today. We got the news coming on here at the top of the hour in, in just a moment. But it, it's a real privilege to have you on. You're, you, you've got a lot of people competing for your your attention, and and we'll do our best to help you out here at the station and here in the state of Utah. Well, I really appreciate that. Thanks for having me, and thanks for giving me the opportunity to uh, to let my my uh, views be heard to your listeners. Well, we'll be polling for you. Thank you for being on the air with us, Daryl. Right. I, I appreciate it and wish you luck. You're very welcome. Thank you. That was Daryl Castle, the Constitution Party nominee for President of the United States. If you just got into the interview late, he lives in Tennessee. He's an attorney down there. And he does have support here in the state of Utah. He doesn't have as much support as Evan McMullen. But I think he made some good points there. I think a lot of people are voting for Evan McMullen, only because he's a member of the LDS faith and they're looking for an alternative to Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Perhaps consider that alternative ought to be Daryl Castle going forward. His vice presidential, uh, I mean, his, his vice president is a um, uh, running mate, is a member of the LDS faith. And I don't think that that should matter. Perhaps it does a little bit to voters here. I'll predict, though, that Donald Trump is actually going to come in third here in the state of Utah. It'll be the only state in the country, Utah, where Donald Trump not only doesn't win the state, but uh, doesn't even come in second. And I would love to see Daryl Castle get more votes than Donald Trump. It's not that I want Hillary Clinton to be president. I don't. I agree with what Mr. Castle just said. She'd be a horrible. But perhaps the statement that might be made by the state of Utah, if it refused to support somebody like Donald Trump, would strengthen the party going forward. And so consider the things that have been said today. Consider voting for Daryl Castle. We, unfortunately, are out of time here in the show. But I want to thank you for being with us. I want to thank you for tuning in to K-Talk, Utah's oldest continually broadcasting station and if you have questions or comments you're always welcome to give us a call 801-254-5855 in Salt Lake City Provo and Ogden please stay tuned for the next show I'm Steve Reinhart and I am signing off You're listening to Utah's first number one talk station. Gay Talk, AM 630, KTKK, Sandy Salt Lake City. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Final leg, mega merger. I'm Michael Toscano. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump in battleground states today, kicking off the final leg of the long trip on the road to the White House. Trump in Pennsylvania and Virginia. Clinton speaking moments ago in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We're going to invest in the middle class. We're going to grow this economy from the middle out and the bottom up, not the top down. AT&T has reportedly reached a deal to buy Time Warner for more than 80 billion bucks, creating a massive media conglomerate. The Dallas-based phone company has reportedly agreed to pay up to $110 a share, the deal requiring government approval, but won't make the cut under President Trump. A deal we will not approve in my administration because it's too much concentration of power in the hands of... Of too few. Media correspondent Brian Stelter. What does at t get? Well, they do get CNN, HBO, the Warner Brothers movie studio, and a number of cable channels owned by Time Warner, like TNT, TBS, and the Cartoon Network. I'm Michael Toscano. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention say there were more reported cases of sexually transmitted diseases last year than ever before in the U.S. CDC reports rates of chlamydia also up almost 6%, rates of gonorrhea rising 13%, syphilis rates up 19%. Well, Donald Trump is helping Janet Jackson make some money. It's Janet. It's Jackson if you're nasty. The 1986 hit single, Nasty, has seen a 250% spike in streaming, according to Spotify. Searches for the song skyrocketed after Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump called Hillary Clinton this... Such a nasty woman. ...during Wednesday night's debate. 
Nasty is one of Janet Jackson's best known songs. I am Sierra Crawford. ISIS has torched a sulfur plant south of Mosul, sending large amounts of noxious gas into the atmosphere, draping Iraqi towns in toxic smoke. Meanwhile, Iraqi forces are now three miles from the city where they plan a major offensive to take it away from ISIS. I'm Michael Toscano. Hi, I'm Joan London, and if you're worried about your parent or a loved one living alone like I...